Hello fellow makeup lovers, how are you guys doing today? So I am super excited for this video because we are finally going to be doing indie makeup releases. We have so, so many things to talk about and honestly that's my fault. So I ended up not posting this like two weeks ago, which was already like doing it like every two weeks. And then the week I was supposed to post it, my sister came in town and I've tried to be a little bit more kind to myself about not having to be as strict with indie makeup releases because I feel like for a bit there it was like a really sh huge stress for me just because there's so much that goes into this video and having to do it every si single week. So I was like, you know what, it's fine, I'll do it next week. And then that entire last week I was sick and it's kind of followed into this week as well. I'm finally feeling better, a little bit better yesterday, much better today, but it has been the struggle so I'm so excited to finally talk about all the new releases I feel like some things aren't gonna feel as new and they're kind of kind of feel like old news just because it's been so long since I did one of these videos but I'm super excited about it I went ahead and poured myself my a poured self I poured myself a glass of uh, Stella Rosa black which is my favorite wine literally as soon as I got home from work today the first thing I did was put um, my bottle of wine into the fridge to chill and I'm like it's been a week I need a glass of wine. Mama needs a glass of wine because there's been lots of stress and things going on, but I'm just super excited to get away for it, from it for a little bit, talk about something less serious, and just dive into some new releases. So before we do that, though, if you're wondering what's happening on my face today, I do have the Natasha Nona Love Palette. I'm finally filming some looks with this, and I wanted... I almost just smacked myself in the face. I wanted to do something a little bit more soft today, and then I have the Milani Lipstick in the shade Nude Crown. I have the Samantha March and Ofra Highlighter on my cheeks today, which, speaking of Samantha March, that's who this video series is inspired by, and also I always include Aniela Konikis because she's the one who made me want to start doing them myself. And then all of the accounts that I use on Instagram for this video and the Community Will Buy It playlist will also be the first thing you can find in the description box. I'm pretty sure because we have so many things to talk about, whenever I have a huge list of things, I normally end up doing that as my pinned comment instead of my description box because my description box it gets so long that it won't be saved. So if you're looking for all of the information for this video, check the pinned comment. It'll be the first one in the comment section for all the links and everything like that. So all that information aside, let's go ahead and jump on into the releases. All right, so the first thing we have to talk about is a few different sneak peeks from Give Me Glow Cosmetics. So first they have revealed that they're going to be doing a collaboration with Mermaid Hair XO on Instagram, which I'm pretty sure is a hair salon that's based in Texas near Give Me Glow Cosmetics. So it's an interesting collaboration, but they are going to be coming out with a bunch of new highlighters, which is really fun. I don't really feel super drawn to any of these except for that really light pink toned one that's on the picture to the left top and then it's the top row all the way to the right. That shade, that pink one really drew me in because I love pink highlighters but that being said I definitely don't need this but I do think they look pretty. I'm excited to see the nice reveal of this rather than just some screenshots that I took from their Instagram stories and just see like what all the colors are individually and get them in different lightings and everything like that. And then they also revealed a new palette that is going to be coming out, I believe this summer, and it says it's going to be a nine pan palette. Unfortunately, Give Me Glow Cosmetics always does like those gigantic pans, so I'm sure this is gonna be a huge palette for only nine shades, but it is called Extra Spicy. Uh, definitely caught my attention because of an inside joke that I have going, uh, but I am curious. I'm wondering if it's just going to be like a really warm toned palette. It's going to be red themed, but I'm kind of feeling like that's been done so much, so I'm curious to see what their take on it would be. Maybe a mixture of red, a little bit of green, like there's like that green at the top of a pepper. There's lots of different colors of peppers too. So I don't know, I'm curious to see what it ends up being. And then one last sneak peek from Give Me Glow Cosmetics. This is a new, I believe, highlighter that's coming out for summer 2020. And I saw this sneak peek and I just feel like that is the most crazy pigmented highlighter I've ever seen. Definitely wouldn't work for my skin tone. I feel like it looks more like eyeshadow than highlighter. Like it's just so strong and pigmented and maybe they really built it up. But if they didn't, even if this was a shade that appealed to me, I think I would pass on it just because I've been kind of gravitating more towards like more 
soft highlighter. It's not super, super soft. Like, I still want to have a nice little glow, but I don't want an eyeshadow on my face type of highlighter. So, that one is a pass for me. And then, speaking of some more highlighters, these are the new Candy Coated Collection from Bitter Lace Beauty. I talked about these super, super briefly uh, in the last Indie Makeup releases, and now they've been completely revealed. They've been out for a little bit. They're available now. I actually thought these were eyeshadows at first because to me they looked like eyeshadows just looking at the colors. Um, they are marketing them as highlighters. I'm really intrigued to see someone use them on their face as highlighters because I feel like they don't look very highlighter-esque. They look like eyeshadows and honestly a bunch of the shades remind me of like my Davina uh, Willy Wonka Exploders. I do really like the looks of these. I think they're pretty. And I want to try Bitter Lace Beauty so bad, but they were, I believe, either $20 each or you could get the entire bundle of six for $100. And I just couldn't justify it. I feel like that's what it comes down to every time with Bitter Lace Beauty. It's like, I just never like the product enough to justify the price tag. And they look beautiful. Like, they look nice, but I really wish that these six shades were available in smaller pan sizes and I would use them as eyeshadows instead of highlighters because that's what they look like to me. Like I'm never gonna wear a teal, straight up teal highlighter. And then all the other shades look like they just have a little bit too pigment, too much pigment to work on my skin own as a highlighter without having like a weird base to them. But that's just um, on first glance. I could definitely be wrong. They could be beautiful in other skin tones. So I want to try them but it's a pass for now unfortunately. And then next we have a new release from Linda Halberg Cosmetics and they released a liquid eyeshadow. I'm a little bit torn on this release because it's it's confusing to me. They released a liquid eyeshadow. They released one shade and it's $32 if I remember correctly. If I saw it in US dollars, I'm pretty sure it's $32 for a gold liquid eyeshadow. I feel like that is so far behind. I feel like we've kind of gone past the liquid eyeshadow phase of makeup. And I mean, I still think that they're beautiful and sparkly and amazing. But if this came out whenever the Steely Glitters had come out, I would have been intrigued by it. I would have probably wanted to purchase it. I used to be obsessed with my glitter shadows and I still like them. But at this point, I've found so many amazing, affordable options of these type of shadows. You could get them for like 5 or $6. Even the new like little e.l.f. ones are super affordable and really pretty. I only have one shade, but I was super impressed by it. So I just cannot, not, 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 not see justifying spending $32 for one liquid eyeshadow. They didn't even come out with like more than one shade. It's just a gold so I was a little bit disappointed by that release. Maybe if they get good reviews on it, they'll come out with more colors. But even then, it's like I would wait to try it on sale. I would not pay full price for that. All right, next we have some new sneak peeks from Love Lux Beauty. And this first one is super blurry. I'm sorry. It's the best that I could get. But they seem to be coming out with some different quads and they're monochromatic themed, which I don't hate. I think that the shades that they're doing actually look really, really beautiful. This first one here seems to have a bright, true yellow matte, more of a marigold yellow matte, a true gold shimmer, and then a yellow shimmer with like pink iridescence to it. That one is definitely the one that calls to me the most, but I don't know if I could justify getting the whole quad just for that one shade. And then they also sneak peek this one, which is beautiful as well, and it has like a really light lavender matte, it has a mauve matte, it has a deep like electric purple, looks like a satin, and then a really intense purpley, bluey, just sparkliness. I don't even know what it would be exactly called, but it just looks really, really pretty. I really like the way this looks so I'm really curious to see what other th shades they do because I feel like I saw a tiny tiny little sneak peek of a pink one in the background of another video you could barely even see it it was like just like a millisecond of seeing it but I'm curious to see what else they do I haven't been the biggest fan of their mats in the past but I think I would be willing to give them another chance 
So I think those are cute. All right, next we have a new collaboration between Lethal Cosmetics and Jolina Menon. And I was super intrigued by this. I saw some sneak peeks and I could not wait to see the reveal just because this is the first time Lethal has collaborated. It was going to be a pre-made palette and I was just obviously intrigued. I really like Lethal Cosmetics. And I feel a little unsatisfied with the palette. Like the color story just doesn't really speak to me. I feel like the colors are kind of all over the place. It's not exactly a rainbow palette, but it's just... Like, the color story doesn't, it just doesn't sp speak to me. I mean, I know I already said that, but I don't know how else to describe it. It just doesn't connect with me. It's not something I look at and go like, wow, that's super aesthetically pleasing, which is something I look for in color stories that I purchase. So the palette was kind of a pass for me. I was, however, intrigued by the nude lipstick. I want to say it might be called Send Nudes. And I actually went on the website, I was looking at it, and... I considered purchasing the nude lipstick just because I liked the shade. It was the first time that Lethal has done bullet lipsticks and they have a highlighter shade that I've been wanting to purchase, but that highlighter was out of stock and I was like, well, I'm not making the order now. So I think before I would make an order, since it's been a little bit of time, I would definitely go watch some reviews and see what people think about the lipstick because at first it was just like it had just been launched. Uh, so, I don't know. I feel like it's a cute collaboration. Um, I did look up Jolina Menon, but her videos are in German, so I couldn't really get a feel, obviously, for, like, what she wanted to do with the collection, what the heart was behind it. So, that's unfortunate. I would have liked to hear more of her thoughts and see just... I, I was intrigued by her, especially since she's the first person that Lethal has collaborated with. Unfortunately, the three phrases that I know in German didn't get me real far, but uh, still, I wish her congratulations for the collection. You know, it's always cool to see women succeeding. So next is a new reveal from Luxie Beauty, and this is already available now. This is their Bloom Spring Collection. I have no idea how much this is in stock or not uh, because I have not checked and it's been a minute since it launched and a lot of times Luxie's new releases will just like fly off the shelves. So these were available for $3 each and they came out with some really beautiful fun matte shades and I feel like their mattes have been a little hit and miss in the past. So I think even if I wanted to try some of these, I would purchase like one or two just to see. And then the shimmers are pretty. Like I feel like looking at it, it's like it's pretty, it's aesthetically pleasing. I like the collection as a whole, but I just don't feel like I need it. Like I don't need more single shadows. Like I'm trying to not buy as much. Like I only bought two palettes last month and I feel really, really good about that. Like I just feel like I've had time to actually enjoy them and get to film with them. So I like taking it a little bit more slow. I've had my crazy moments and I'm just, I'm okay. I don't need it. All right, next is some new single shadows. And I know I just thought I don't need any more single shadows, but I will make an exception for these because they are beautiful and I can't stop thinking about them. And this is from Terra Moon's. They sneak peeked that they are going to have new pastel mattes coming soon, and they just look so pretty and soft. I really like the formula of the other matte shades that I have from Terra Moon, so I have high hopes that these will be really, really good as well, and I just, I'm so excited. Like, whenever I saw this, like, I just, like, got butterflies in my stomach. I was like, yes, they're doing pastel mattes. So exciting. They also sneak peeked that they are going to be doing pastel chameleon shadows. Again, cue the butterflies. They are so pretty. I really, really love the idea of doing the pastel chameleons and the pastel mats together. I think that's just so, so cute. I am all about it. Definitely looking forward to purchasing those. I'm, ugh, I'm so excited. I love their chameleon shadows and I love that they're doing different variations of them. And if they're the same formula that they already have and they're just like that super, super intense, shifting, colorful I just I'm so excited about it so that's definitely very high up on my wish list and then next is from Davina Cosmetics and these 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 are their new candy cakes collection they say that they are coming soon so I assume that these will be releasing whenever they finally bring back their website I believe they moved from LA to somewhere in Oregon so 
they should have their shop going back up soon. And these shades look pretty. Um, I'm intrigued by them. I wonder if they're the shades that they've been sneak peeking and doing swatches of because if they are, then I'm sold. They've been doing some really beautiful swatches and maybe it's a little bit harder to see in this picture because you're just seeing one color. You're not really seeing any of the shifts or anything like that. If they are corresponding, I'm not really sure. I don't know. I feel like I would probably purchase these because I really love the Davina like intense metallic formula. If they are like the sugar drops or if they're like the Willy Wonka Exploders, then I would definitely purchase them. The only shade I'm not like super jazzed about is Mystic Moon Pie because it's a silvery gray and I don't really wear those kind of tones super often, but all the other shades look really, really cute to me. I feel like I'm going to edit me coughing out of this video like a thousand times and it's going to be great. This goes up super late Sunday, that's why. <laughs> all right, next, another exciting release and this actually just got revealed today. Again, this is from Menagerie Cosmetics. They're coming out with a new eyeshadow palette. It is called the Pastel Pup. And I have to say, whenever they sneak peeked the packaging for Pastel Pup, I was super shocked because I really thought they were going to do... Actually, I think I was wrong. I think I guessed like a walrus. But even if they do... Or no, I think I said maybe penguins. But anyways, the fact that they're doing seals... Uh, I really thought they were going to do a cool toned neutral palette. I just felt like that was like the direction they were moving in. So I was very surprised to see this, but like surprised in the best way because I love pastels. I'm excited that it's like the next trend. I've been all about it lately and I think that this looks really pretty. I really like the Menagerie Matte Formula and almost every single shade in here is a matte except for one. So I'm excited about it and I'm probably going to purchase it. I'm like leaning towards like, yes, I'm going to purchase it. I think it'll be really great to compare to the Creepy Cute palette from Shroud Cosmetics, which I don't know where exactly I have that one right now. I used it just the other day, but it is the best pastel matte shades. Like I can't recommend it enough. I've used that palette so, so much. And it's one of those where when people talk about it and they're like, oh yeah, I never picked it up. Is it worth it? I've always kind of thought about it. I'm like, do it, do it. And I'm not normally that person, but it really is so good. Like the matte formula is phenomenal. So I'm excited to test that out in comparison with this. This one has a white instead of a gray, which is what the creepy cute palette has and this one has a few more matte options it also has one shimmer but I definitely do see some similarities going on there so I'm leaning towards yes I will purchase this palette it is going to be launching March 21st March 21st March 21st oh goodness wait let me look oh man you guys okay well March 21st if my trip next weekend doesn't get canceled, I am pretty sure I will be in the air when that launches. Oh man, 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time is 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will... Oh gosh, I'm gonna go check my layover. I'm like, please let me be not in the air when that launches, dang it. Okay, well, I'm gonna try my darnness. To get my hands on it if I can. They are also going to be releasing... Oh wait, actually wait, go back. I wanted to show you guys swatches as well of the palette. The swatches look pretty. Um, they look fine. They look like they've been built up a little bit, which is fine because sometimes you have to do that with pastels. I do feel though, I really, really hope that they show some swatches on a deeper skin tone before they make this available for purchase because I feel like with pastels... Like, the way they look on me is so different than the way that they look on someone with melanin in their skin. And I feel like my review of pastel palettes in general really doesn't hold, like, it. maybe I can say how much they blend, but I feel like, for me, it's, like, so easy because they show up on me, like, basically no matter what. They could be not even that great of a formula. They'll still show up on me because it's putting color over paper whiteness. I just really hope that they show some swatches on a deeper skin tone because I just feel like with pastels, it is like extra, extra important. I'm not saying it's not already important because it is. I just know they need to be seen on more than white skin for people to make an informed purchase. So 
That would be my hope. They are also going to be releasing four new trifoil shadows, and these are going to be separate from the palette, and they look to be like really light pastel toppers. The top one in this picture, Snowball, is actually in the palette, but I believe it's going to be available for purchase individually as well. And then the other three you can purchase individually. I probably, I feel like if I'm making a purchase for the palette, I will probably grab these and maybe grab one of their liquid lipsticks to get to the free shipping mark. Even though, you guys, this is so sad. Their liquid lipstick, that's my favorite red shade. It literally broke on me. I don't know if you can tell. It broke and then I couldn't seal it back up and now it's like super thick and it's like not even the same formula anymore and I tried to fix it but I literally can't. So that's super disappointing. It's my favorite red shade and it's not even available for purchase anymore. The shade Cat Fight. So I don't know. I'm super sad about that. I really hope it doesn't happen again. I've never had that happen with a liquid lipstick before or like any packaging like that. So I don't know. But yes, <laughs> long story short, if I am able to make an order, I will make an order. All right, next from Shop Peachy Queen is the new Far Out palette, and this is available now at the time that you're seeing this. It is a 60s inspired palette. It's, it's a rainbow palette. It's a rainbow palette. I want to try them so bad, but I just feel like none of their color stories ever super speak to me. There's like some neon matte shades. I mean, it's fun. It's cute for summer, but it doesn't really speak to me, so it's going to be a pass. Next is the new Lunatic Cosmetics Labs Descendant palette, and this is an eyeshadow palette. At first, I thought it was a face palette just because of how neutral it is, and they posted something like along the lines with this launch about how they've been requested to do a neutral palette. I think it looks fine if someone is looking for neutral shadows, but at the same time, I think because they have such a unique, interesting packaging, it would be just cool to see more color schemes that are interesting and unique. I feel like you could get these exact same kind of tones all together in like a Tarte palette, like Tarte in Bloom or whatever the original Tarte one was that they did. So I feel like that's a pass for me, not really something I'm drawn to but I could see why some people would be. Alrighty, so next is something super, super exciting, and this was the announcement of the Samantha March and Ofra collaboration. I'm so, so excited for Sam. I'm so happy for her. She is so sweet and supportive and kind, and she's just like the representation that you can be a good person and still get places, and I just... I don't know, I look up to her so, so much, so I'm just so happy for her. She got to do multiple permanent uh, products in the Ofra line, which is so exciting. I'm wearing her highlight today, today, like, in honor of her having a full collection. So this used to be called the March Beauty Word Highlighter, and now it is going to be called Start Inspired and it's going to be available in their permanent line, which is super exciting. I love these two shades mixed together, and it's actually one of my favorite highlighters to bring traveling because I feel like if I want to do a cool tone look or a warm tone look, I have both options, and I love using both of these as inner corner highlights as well. The mirror is really nice. And then she's also coming out with a blush duo, which I'm pretty sure is the next most exciting product to me. I just love blush, and one side's matte, one side is shimmer. She's also coming out with a bronzer duo. Again, one side matte, one side shimmer. Super excited to test that out and see how it'll look on my skin tone. It, it was a little bit warm and goldeny, so I'm curious to see if I'll be able to pull it off with a light hand. And then she also came out with two lip products that are going to be sold in a duo. And there is a liquid lipstick, which I believe is called Story. And then there is a lip gloss, which is called Millie, and it is a pearl shade. So the PR package is going to be limited edition, and it's going to be available for it's going to be available for pre-sale on Monday, the day after this video is um, going up. So you can get it all together if you would like, but all of the other products are going to be launching on the, this coming up Friday, and they're going to be permanent to the Ofra line. So that's so, so exciting. I'm so happy for her. She deserves it. Uh, she did ask me for my address for the PR, 
but if she didn't, I would definitely be purchasing the products myself. I don't think I would purchase the PR box because I already have the highlighter and I'm super happy with it. Like, I feel like it's going to last me a really long time. Plus, I already own Pillow Talk and Star Island, the two highlighters that make up this highlighter individually. So I don't really need another one, even though I guess I will get another one if I get the PR package. Um, but either way, if, it, if I wasn't, I would have definitely purchased the blush and the bronzer and most likely the lippies as well just to support her. So I'm so happy for her. All right. So I feel like I kind of got to go through weirdly now because I screenshotted a bunch of indie stuff and then I kind of went back and forth between indie and mainstream. So I'm going to try and get all the indie out of the way first. So we have a new release from Melt Cosmetics and this is the Rust Palette. I think this is pretty. I like it. I feel like if I had it, I would like the looks I'd make out of it, but I just feel like I don't need it. I can't justify it. I have so many warm and goldeny shades. I mean, the shade Arrowed and Rubbish, okay, it's really pretty, but I just don't need it. I'm not going to talk myself into it. But they are actually coming out with a eyeliner with that, and it is called Burnish, and it is a red-brown gel liner. I really like their gel liner formula. And I really like this color. So maybe, I don't know. It's not a need. It's not a need. It's not a need by any means. Maybe next time Mel does a sale. Maybe if it goes on Sephora, I'll pick it up. But that one, that definitely intrigued me. Even more than the palette, I was like, dang, look at that eyeliner though. All right, so... Let's see, we also have a release from Sugar Pill, and this is their new capsule collection. I think it's called C2, which I assumed that there was going to be more because their original one was called the Pink, Pink Edition or something like that, even though it wasn't even that pinky. And this one is like a neutral palette with a pop of yellow, green, and blue. I don't know, just not super intrigued by this color story. I've hit, heard hit and miss reviews about the palettes. I feel like I'm stumbling over my words so much today and I apologize. I'm just like trying to get back into it and talking for a while and all the coughing that I keep stopping and restarting my sentences. So I'm so sorry about that, but I'm pretty sure well, I'm actually, okay. I'm, I'm positive that that's a pass for me. And then Okay, next is from Persona Cosmetics and these are two new blushes. I feel so attacked, honestly, because I was like, you know what? I don't need any more blushes. I'm not buying any more blushes. I have no reason to justify like any blush purchases because I have so many blushes. Blushes take so long to get through. I don't think I've ever hit pay out on any blush, even despite trying. So I was like, you know what? Like, I'm just, I'm done. I don't need any more blushes. And then all these keep beautiful blush releases keep coming out and I am such a sucker. I bought the Alamar blushes. I just bought some from Kosas because they had a really good sale and I've been intrigued to purchase from them. So I I had a moment because I was like, I'm just going to buy one and then I bought three. So I don't need any more blush, but do I want these? Yes, I do, because I've been wanting to try Persona Cosmetics. This is the first release they've had that has, like, really intrigued me. They are also tiny blushes. They are way smaller than a regular blush pan, which I actually appreciate. I feel like that's actually kind of counterproductive because it makes me want to justify them more. I've heard good things about them so far from the people who receive them in PR, so... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to not think about it anymore. And let's see. The last indie makeup release that we have to talk about is from the brand Lunar Skies Cosmetics, and they are coming out with a new Amethyst Moon palette. This definitely caught my attention because it is a really vibrant purple palette. Really pretty. Really just stunning matte shades. There's two shimmers and unfortunately it looks like there is one pressed glitter which makes it just something I wouldn't want to buy but I do think the color story is pretty. I feel like 
there's a lot of mid-tone shades going on there it would have been nice to see just like maybe one really deep purple one really light purple just because that's my personal preference but I do think overall it looks like a cute palette all right guys we have finally made it through the indie releases now let's go ahead and jump on into a few different and by a few I mean quite a few different mainstream releases that have been pretty hyped up so I'm gonna go ahead and start off by talking about the new Huda Beauty Pastel Obsessions palettes and honestly it's like I wanted to like these but I just don't really. I just feel like none of the color schemes really call me in. The rose is just kind of like nah I don't really love the purple and yellow. I feel like that's just like a color theory nightmare. The lilac is okay but it's kind of like browns with like a little bit of purple and it doesn't really intrigue me. The mint one I like the most definitely. I think it's the cutest but I feel like that kind of like mint mixed with brown, just that whole look. I just got the Dominique Cosmetics Latte 2 palette and I feel like I was satisfied with my mint and brown, like wanting those two shades together in a palette color story. I think if this came first, I might have purchased the pastel mint and passed on the Dominique Cosmetics one, but it is what it is, so it's fine. I'm just, I'm not really... I'm not going to purchase them. I don't need them. And then next we have some new bronzer releases from Morphe. And I was actually intrigued by these because it looks like they have 10 different shades. And I love bronzer. The lightest tone looked really, really soft. It really called to me. But I didn't really see like a point on purchasing like one thing from Morphe, like one bronzer. And yesterday actually I was on the Ulta website just because I was feeling anxious so sometimes when I'm anxious, I shop. I didn't buy anything yesterday, but I just, like, I looked at the new arrivals and just, like, scrolled through. And honestly, like, nothing intrigued me. I think I didn't even add a single thing to my cart and, like, pretend that I was going to buy it or anything. But I did see the bronzers. I opened it up, and they only had five shades on Ulta. So I was definitely disappointed by that because they're not carrying the full line. But I think that the the lineup looks really nice. There's a lot of variety and a lot of colors so I appreciate that in a bronzer collection uh but I am not going to be purchasing right now and I, I don't need it I really don't I have tons of bronzers I love so it's okay and then next speaking of not needing bronzers not needing blushes these are the new Fenty Beauty cream products and I feel like as an overall idea, I'm super intrigued by these. I'm like, ooh, cream bronzers, cream blushes. But looking at the colors, none of them really appeal to me. I feel like the bronzer amber, which looks to be more of a contour, I would be curious to see someone with fair skin use that and get their opinion on it. Out of the blushes, strawberry dip and petal poppin', are the ones that appeal to me the most. I think I think Petal Poppin. If I was going to buy any blush, it would be Petal Poppin. But I don't feel like, oh my gosh, I need to buy it or anything. I just, I'm excited about it, but none of the colors are like, dang, that's my color. Like, that's the one, like, I really need to try or buy or, like, I can't live without. So I'm intrigued to hear people's thoughts on these, but I think, I think I'm going to pass on them, even though they're really, really beautiful. Maybe I'll get them later down the road, but as for now, I'm A-OK. -okay. And then next, this is actually kind of funny because I was listening to Samantha March's Will I Buy It on Wednesday. It must have been Wednesday because that's when she uploads them. And I was listening at work, and sometimes when I'm at work, I just listen with the headphones on, and I don't actually watch the video. And normally with new makeup release videos, that's not a problem. I'm pretty up to date, so when someone starts talking about a new release... I typically always know what they're talking about. I can visualize it in my head. I've seen it before. Rarely does someone start talking about something that I haven't heard of. But she was talking about these new Kylie single shadows. And I I didn't even think anything of it. I didn't go and check my phone to see what the picture was. I was just listening to her talk about them. How she doesn't really like use single shadows that often. She doesn't need them. And I was like, ooh, that's interesting. Kylie's coming out with more single shadows. And I was thinking in my head... I should ask you guys if you would like to hear my opinion on them just because I have so many single shadows like I could compare 
and just give you my two cents on whether they're worth it or not or like what indie brand I would recommend instead kind of thing. And I had that in my mind, but then when I was going through and screenshotting stuff for this video, I saw the singles and I was like, eh? Like, those are the colors. I feel like I don't want any of them. Like, they're just so bland. So, never mind. I take it back. I don't want to review these. I don't want to pay for them. Because they're just... They're not for me. They're not intriguing at all. So, I thought that was kind of funny because at first I was like, hmm. But then when I actually saw the colors, I was like, hmm. No, no, I don't need that. All right, guys, I hope you're ready because we're going to quickly talk about like 8 million ColourPop collections. And first here we have the Mulan collection. I feel like I keep saying her name wrong, but I do really like her. I like her movie. I can't wait to see the live action come out. Um, but this collection doesn't really appeal to me. I think the, I'm not sure if they're blushes or bronzers. They look kind of cute. I think the nude lipstick looks kind of cute. I think the packaging is adorable, but I don't know. I don't feel any, like, urge to purchase it. And then ColourPop also came out with a Sailor Moon collection, and again, I thought the blushes were cute. They have, like, little cat imprints in them. They have the palette, which I thought was a really pretty, just soft pastel palette with like some neutrals. I was intrigued by the color story, but I don't really have a thing for Sailor Moon. I never watched it. I don't really care about that. I don't mean that in like a bad way. Like I'm so happy for everyone else who's happy about this, but it just doesn't make me like want to purchase it more because it's Sailor Moon or anything. Plus it sold out so fast and it was kind of like one of those things I'd rather just someone who really cares about Sailor Moon buy the collection. Like why am I going to fight for it? So I thought it was cute, but not something like I super needed. The blushes though with the cats are my favorite. And then they just released the new Macon Mobs collection. And again, the blushes are cute. They're like experimenting with imprints. And I feel like that's going to be the death of me and a lot of people because whenever like something about imprints and powder is just super intriguing. And then there's some single like little super shock shadows. There's some Lux, what is that? Lux glosses. It's fine. It's cute. I feel like it's kind of been done before, but I don't really hate it. It's just, it's like a soft neutrally mauve palette and then the collection that they did that I'm the most excited about is a new collaboration with makeup just for fun Amanda I really love her and she came out with the shrinking or no shrinking violet collection I definitely was like dang it because I just purchased that palette like last month so I was like dang I wish I knew she was coming out with the collaboration because I would have just purchased hers and supported her because I love her and I feel like the collection all together looks really really pretty. It came with a blush, um, a super shock shadow, a lipstick, a brush, and it looks like another little shadow there. So it just looks really cute. I'm so excited for her. I'm glad she was able to do a little collection, a little favorites thing here. She does have a code which is makeup just for fun and it saves you 15% off of the collection I believe in case you're curious so congratulations Amanda I wish I wish I had waited two months to buy this palette or else I would have got this collection alrighty next we have a new not new release from Anastasia they brought the Nicole Guerrero glow kit back and I was super surprised by this because it has been gone for a hot minute that was years ago I actually did really like this highlighter palette. I owned it. Um, I do have a video on it of like face swatches and giving my thoughts if you're curious. Maybe if I'm feeling a little crazy, I'll like put it in the cards over here, I think. I don't know. I think over here, actually. I'll put it in the cards if I remember. Um, but I ended up breaking it and then I just decided I didn't even use it that much. And I think I sold it in like a declutter or something. I don't even know. But it's not in my life anymore because I felt like I really liked the shade Kitty Cat and the white and maybe Forever Young, but the other colors were a little bit too dark for me to really wear. So yeah, I mean, it's a pass again. I don't need to rebuy it after getting rid of it, but I'm excited about it because I feel like a lot of people missed out on it. It is a really pretty glow kit. Um, I wish... I wish that kitty cat was available as a single, actually. That would have been great. I know people are kind of upset about, like, limited edition not being limited edition anymore. 
but I'm just like, there's 8 million problems in the world. The last thing I really care about is like being like, oh my gosh, you said it was limited edition. I mean, at the same time, like I get it. It's valid whenever brands use it as like a quick way to like make people feel pressured to buy things. But at the same time, I just don't care that much. Not right now. Not right now. There's like too many things going on. All right, next we have a new release from Natasha Denona. And these are their new golden sunshine in a tube. That's how they described it. That is very intriguing. There's a, these are their new face glow cream shimmers in an illuminating cream stick that perfectly fuses to skin. Yada, yada, yada. I'm already sold. I'm not really sold. I'm halfway sold. I just really love Natasha Nona's products. I love her highlighters and the lightest shade is definitely intriguing to me. I don't need it though. I don't need it. I don't need another cream product. The little blushes that I bought from Kosas came with highlighters in them, so I don't need it. I don't need it. I'm just going to not think about it. All right. Next from Jouer is their new essential hydrating lip oil. And again, this is something I'm like, I don't need it. I don't need it at all. I have plenty of lip balms. I have lip glosses. I have lip masks. I have lip oils. Like I'm so good. But then I'm like hydrating lip oil, essential hydrating lip oil. Like it sounds so, so good. I don't need it. Don't need it. So trying not to think about that as well. I feel like that's been my game plan. Like I haven't, I haven't bought a single thing that we've talked about. And these are releases from like the past few weeks. So I've done good. But I feel like my, my game plan is just don't think about it and it'll be fine. So we'll see how long that keeps lasting. The last thing I have to mention is a new little mini palette from Vizart or Viziart. And I believe that this is called their Choo Choo or Chow Chow palette. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. But, oh, maybe it's Shoo. Oh my gosh. It has a quote that says, give a girl the right shoe and she can conquer the world, as Marilyn Monroe almost said. Oh, wait, no, chew. But are they trying to say it sounds like shoe? Is it pronounced shoe? Chew? Chow? I don't know. I don't know what the pronunciation is. But anyways, it's a really cute little palette. I was definitely intrigued by this. It has some bright mattes has some really interesting like duochrome looking shimmers. I feel like the one that threw me off is the silver. That's the only shade where I'm kind of like, eh, I could do without you. I feel like I just saw Michelle Wang posted a video on this, so I need to go watch that and hear her thoughts on it. But I do think it's really pretty, but I don't need it. I don't need it. So again, just not going to think about it. So, oh my gosh, you guys, I've been filming forever. 2.36. It's crazy. I didn't even eat dinner tonight because I wasn't hungry but now I'm like super hungry but it's like should I eat at almost 3 a.m. by the time I get upstairs and turn all my camera stuff off it'll be 3 a.m. I'll probably like eat chips because I'm an adult so that is everything for today's video I hope you enjoyed it if you stuck around till the end congrats to you like you're a trooper because I feel like I've been super annoying with my voice it's like going in and out stumbling over my words like I said I don't I don't know why I don't know why I'm doing that today but it's super annoying I need to like practice talking again or something so I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see y'all in the next one definitely let me know down below what releases you are thinking about purchasing or not because I mean I don't know I'm kind of surprised like I said we talked about so many products and the only thing that's on my wish list is the pastel stuff from Terra Moons and the pastel stuff from Menagerie. Everything else is kind of just a pass. All right, I'm at the blabbering point. I'm going to go now. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.